Hey there guys, welcome back to Artifact Studios and this is another video and this one is all about frequency splitting in Ableton Live. But before I'm going to get into it, um, I want to let you know that right now on my website you can get a 40% discount on all of my sample packs and preset packs. I'm doing that because I've reached 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. I mean, how cool is that? To get the discount, you need to go to my website which is www.artifacts-studios.com. On there you can find the products. Um, simply click on shop in the menu there you can find the products you can uh, view the details view the product pages see if you like it and if you like it add it to your cart then simply click on cart in the top menu then on the cart itself right here you can see a little box where it says apply coupon there you fill in the discount code and the discount code is 40k special fill that in click apply coupon and it will basically take 40% off the total price. So if you want to get my sample packs or preset packs at a discounted price, this is your chance. Now, onto the video. So this video is all about frequency splitting. Now, if you ask me how to do frequency splitting inside Ableton Live, then I will tell you simply use the multiband dynamics effect. So it's really easy to set up just take um, this effect and I'm gonna be working with only two bands right now to keep it simple you can do it with three if you want but that's all fine now I'm gonna group that multiband dynamics and I'm gonna solo the low band so if I now play my node it should sound pretty much like a sine wave with maybe a few upper harmonics but we've taken out all of the high end from that particular square wave like that so I'm just taking that all out now I'm gonna duplicate my chain and I can call this one sub sub and call this one mids and on the mids layer I'm gonna solo the mid section so now we have our square wave again so, theoretically, when I turn this on and off, you shouldn't really hear a difference in sound. And I don't think you will be able to hear a difference. But there is a clear difference. And a lot of people don't know that. So, that's why I think frequency splitting using the multiband dynamics is, well, it's not a wrong thing but it's also probably not the best way to do it. It's the most easy way to do it, that's for sure. It's the quickest way to do it inside Ableton Live. But there are much better ways of frequency splitting. And to really understand that, you gotta understand what this, this particular setup of frequency splitting will do to the signal that you're feeding into it. So I've got that square wave that I'm feeding into the multiband dynamics now and when I record this you would probably um, expect to see a square wave in the audio file that is being recorded so let's just try that out and see what happens now that's enough we don't need much more length than that and let us zoom in on this now it might be me, but if I zoom in on that, that's that looks nothing like a square wave. If I turn the multiband dynamics uh, rack off and press record, that's how a square wave looks. That's a real square wave. So, what is it that's going on right here? Why is this happening? When you're splitting your frequencies using the multiband dynamics, what it's doing is it's essentially just applying a few low pass and high pass filters to create the individual bands of frequencies. Now, when you are familiar with the way filters work, you know that most filters and equalizers, because an equalizer essentially is just a filter, but when you use those and when you're familiar with that, you know that when you add a filter and take out frequencies or when you cut or boost frequencies with an EQ you are essentially changing the phases of those frequencies so what happens 
when you apply filtering to this you are changing the face and that gives us that weird looking waveform because it's changing the phases around that 120 hertz and that gives us a really weird looking waveform it still it still sounds like a square wave but it's not a square wave it looks nothing like it so when you're gonna feed this particular sound that we have right now into a distortion you're gonna get a different result than when you're gonna send the clean square wave into the distortion it's really simple because you're sending in a different waveform into the distortion so the final effect of the w of, of the distortion on that waveform will be different so how are we gonna deal with this I mean the EQ8 inside Ableton Live is not a linear phase EQ so you cannot do this with the EQ8 you have to use a linear phase equalizer I'm gonna add Fab Filter Pro Q to the subband and I'm gonna create a dot reset the game and set that frequency to 120 Hertz now that's the same frequency we had earlier in the multiband dynamics now I'm gonna set this to a high cut so we get a nice sub band of frequencies and I'm gonna make a pretty steep curve now if I go down to the bottom where it says zero latency that is the processing mode Fab Filter Pro Q is now running on zero latency will require the least amount of processing power of your computer so you get the fastest response but when you start boosting and cutting frequencies you're also introducing changes in the phase of the sound and that might introduce changes um, when you start adding effects later on so if we click zero latency you have two more options you have linear phase and natural phase now linear phase will try to to um, minimize those phase changes so with a linear phase EQ you don't get all those changes in phase when you start boosting and cutting your frequencies now natural phase I think is just somewhere in between zero latency and linear phase um, if linear phase is slowing down your computer so much that you can't work with it then I advise you to, to go with natural phase but linear phase is the one you want to use if you want to do this the right way so I'm now going to copy this one and paste it on the mid band and I'm gonna turn this dot into a low cut so that we have a mid band as well now I can AB this this is our square wave without any of the frequency splitting so one more time and this is width it still pretty much sounds the same right but look at when I record this and look at the waveform that we're gonna get this is gonna look much more like a square wave there we go so remember how our waveform just a while ago looked nothing like a square wave well that's what we got right now it's still not a perfect square wave but it looks much more similar now if I really want to go into this I can for instance say let's try and putting this on very high just to see what happens let's record that again it's better but still looks a little bit weird with that bump in the middle let's see if we can get that out um, let's do a 96 db per octave curve that's a really steep curve let's see how that affects the final sound this looks much more like a square wave um, I kinda like want to get this flat but if you think about what we had before which looked nothing like a square wave and what we have now which pretty much resembles a square wave how it should be I think we've done a pretty good job so now I can start adding a whole bunch of distortion to this and it will actually well keep sounding like a square wave I mean it won't trigger the distortion in a different way 
and when I use the uh, other effect we might actually get a completely different result. So that's how you do frequency splitting in Ableton Live or at least how I think you should do it. If you want to get it down quick without a lot of CPU usage use the multiband dynamics. If you want to get a really clean sound know what it's what it's doing and well be completely sure that it's not changing the phases use a linear phase EQ. That's it for this video. Um, keep in mind on my website there's the 40k subscriber discount 40% off of all the products on my web store. Go to www.artifacts-studios.com and I hope to see you back soon. Peace.